All right, back to the TR7, 1980 TR7. And uh, in the last video, we took apart the seats and we started cleaning them up and refurbishing them. And I know you're expecting the assembling on the, of the seats, but we still don't have the covers. We sent them to dry cleaning and I think we're gonna have them back in two days. So while we're waiting for the covers to come back, I'm gonna start working a little bit on the carpet. First of all, of course, we have to fix the floor a little bit over there. We need to get rid of the surface rust and then paint a little bit here and there. And then we have to replace the carpet. The carpet is right here. The seat frames are there painted. The carpet is right here and it is in a really bad shape. So of course it can't go back and we were thinking of buying a new carpet but when I looked around uh, most of the carpets that are available are just flat pieces in eight or ten pieces I don't even know how many but they are not uh, like this one molded and they won't take the same shape actually what I see on most of them is that this part here is uh, just flat and it is um, just floating on top of these two rails just floating on top of this and I don't like that even here it's not nice on the new carpet I have another idea here I was thinking if we have to uh, use carpet in pieces why don't we just make it ourselves we have an upholstery uh, room here and we can do it ourselves we don't need to pay crazy money for it so that was the original idea I was gonna make the same carpet as the ones that are available to buy but now as I'm looking at it I think I can actually make this carpet with the same shape i know it's molded it has shapes it goes up and down and it's not flat but what if i can make it flat hmm? you don't know what i mean well i'll show you what if we cut it here we cut it here we cut it in few spaces and turn it into a flat piece and then use it as a pattern cut new piece with the same shape and just stitch the lines where we cut it here we stitch them together and we're gonna give it this shape you still don't know what I mean okay I'll show you Now these are one, two, three straight flat pieces, aren't they? Now they're still wavy, but the base is flat. So if I cut five pieces like this, stitch them together, they're gonna give me the exact same shape. At least that's the plan. <laughs> Before I start with the carpet though, I put the plug back on the hole on the floor. I de-rusted it using rust converter and then I primed it and painted it with uh, track bed liner so it has time to dry while we're dealing with the carpet. I try to get rid of the waves with the steamer so I can uh, lay them really flat on the table and use them as template and that worked but not that well. So I used some uh, weights to keep them down so I can draw the outline with chalk. This big piece wasn't laying really flat, so I cut it into smaller pieces and now I can actually have four pieces. Okay. 
So as you can see here, I didn't cut the pieces exactly on the lines. I left uh, three, about three eighths of an inch outside of the lines where I'm gonna have to stitch. So this I can use as a seam allowance because if I cut it exactly on the line, then my entire carpet is gonna be short at the end of the day. These two pieces go together, so I put them face to face and stitched a little bit further away from the edge, which is exactly on the choke line. So the two big pieces are joined and now it's time to add the little piece in the middle. It has to be stitched on both sides, so we start with the first one. And then the second side. And finally this really complicated piece, which is very tricky to stitch, but it worked well. And this is what it looks like uh, when all the pieces are joined together. I know it's not pretty, but it's not done yet. You still have to see the rest of it. Well, somehow I missed to film that part, but what I actually did was I opened the seam allowance on the back side of the carpet and I glued it down so it stays open. This made the top of the carpet, the good side of the carpet, look really nice and flat. And as you can see, it's uh, taking the shape that we want. It has little wrinkles here and there, but with the steamer, when I'm gluing it into the car, I'm sure they're gonna come out and it's gonna be really nice. Now, the carpet that we're using is uh, really nice and soft and pliable, but the thing with it is that it has no volume. I mean, it's not thick enough. We had to add under pad or under carpet underneath, so it has this thickness. Uh, so this is what I'm doing here, I'm cutting those pieces from under carpet, I'm cutting them to the exact shape, I'm not leaving 3 8 of an inch for a seam allowance because I'm not gonna stitch them together, I'm just gonna glue them to the floor and then I'm gonna lay the carpet on top. I also marked and punched the holes for the seat fasteners using my, my specially designed hammer for hole punching. <laughs> and then I could start gluing the pieces in the car. Uh, I was using trim glue again, and with the trick with this glue is uh, I spray it on both parts, on the floor and on the pieces that I'm gonna glue on, and then I wait for it to dry a little bit, like not more than two, three minutes, because when it's wet, it sticks like crazy. It sticks very hard, and if you have to make some corrections, you can't. So that's why I let it dry a little bit and then I just uh, start laying the pieces where they belong. It still sticks but not that hard and I, if I need to correct something I can easily unglue it and glue it again on the right place. And once I'm happy with the position then I heat it up with a heat gun or with um, a steamer and that activates the glue again and then it sticks there forever. Originally the wiring harness was taped to the inner seal, so we just pulled the tape before, but uh, it stayed on the wiring harness, so now I just sprayed the tape with glue and uh, I glued it back to the seal. I glued also the complicated shape piece at the back, and that only proved that my theory works well, <laughs> because it fits like a glove. At this point I figure that I have to cover the seals first because the pieces on the floor overlap them. 
so I had to do the seal piece as well and it needed some trimming too to make it flat so I cut some notches which I'm gonna stitch together on the new pieces and I'm gonna take I'm gonna give it the shape that uh, this old piece has So this piece is only carpet, even the original carpet doesn't have under part here so it's gonna be only carpet that I'm gonna glue directly on the seal. So I cut the two pieces and stitch them together and then we are ready to go start gluing everything in the car. But before that I glued the seam allowance open as on the big piece. I sprayed the back of the carpet with glue on the table because it was easier. The, the seal is also sprayed already and the glue is pretty dry and you will see now how I am able here to unglue it and re-glue it on a different spot which uh, it's not so easy if the glue is uh, still fresh. So we're gonna do the same thing, we're gonna adjust it, we're gonna unglue it and glue it as many times as we need and then we're gonna heat it with the heat gun or with the steamer and the glue is gonna come back to life and stick really nice. So it took some fiddling but at the end I think uh, it is really nice because the shape is exactly as we wanted it and it follows the shape of the seal and now the moment of truth let's see if the big piece is gonna fit i think it's a good idea before we spray it with glue to test fit it huh? <laughs> fits like a glove i should say perfect i'm happy i'm really happy so Tomorrow we just need to make binding here on this line at the end we're just gonna mark it is actually where it was marked I, I was afraid to cut it to the line but maybe the line is where I should cut it then we'll put binding on it and we're done mm -hmm. I love it so it is the day after and here I wanted to make sure that the line that I have at the side close to the seal is uh, overlapping just enough the piece of carpet that's on the seal already and it turned out that the light was exactly what I wanted it so I cut it and then I was ready to put binding on it for the binding I had this piece of vinyl that uh, was matching more or less the color of the interior of the vinyl on the seats so I used that I cut it on two inch strips Then I joined the strips on the sewing machine to make one long piece and when I was joining them I joined them on 45 degrees so when I fold it around the edge of the carpet it doesn't become too bulky. You will see what I mean. Then I put the strip face to face with the carpet and stitch them together at approximate uh, half inch from the edge and I made sure that this half inch remained, uh, remained even all the way because that's going to determine how wide my binding is going to be at the end. When I reached the join on the strip, I made sure that the seam allowance remains open again to reduce the bulkiness. And at the end I left the vinyl a little bit longer than the carpet and I folded it around it and then I stitched it. And I did the same thing in the beginning, I didn't show it but I did it. 
and uh, now you see when I fold the vinyl around the carpet it is uh, becoming nice finished end here I'm putting a top stitch right in between the carpet and the vinyl so it becomes invisible you can't really see it because it sinks inside the old stitch and that's what it looks like at the back I don't need to do that but I prefer to trim the allowance close to the stitch because it looks better not for anything else and then uh, since we know that it fits well I spray the back with glue because it's easier to do it here on the table than in the car Then I sprayed with glue the under carpet as well and um, then I started uh, installing the carpet in its place. Again it took some fiddling but it worked fine at the end. I'm really happy actually with how it worked. Okay, so this is just roughly glued in the glue is still not holding very well because it's uh, it dried by the time i put it on but that was the idea right i wanted it to remain dry so i can uh, glue it and unglue it as many times as i need to and now with the steamer we're gonna get rid of all these wrinkles we're gonna heat the glue so it's gonna stick well and then it's never coming out again And this is the final result. I am really, really happy with uh, how it turned out. Most of the wrinkles are gone. They're a little bit here and there, but that's like nothing. I'm really proud of it. <laughs> For the other side, I did exactly the same procedure. The only difference is that I put the pattern upside down. So now I have the opposite side and also there were these two pieces of uh, rubber in the footwell that I cut from the old carpet and I stitched to the new one on the same place. Okay, a few hours later and the driver's side is done as well. We transferred these rubber pads too, so I think it looks great. I think it looks even better than the other side as usual because it's the second side and I already knew where to pay attention and where I can get tricked so the carpet is done now we can assemble the dash I think I'm gonna call my friend KJ who disassembled it so he can put it back together and I can start replacing these as well because there's carpet here or all, all, all around I think and this uh, deck so this carpet has to be replaced as well to match the brown down there uh, I'm hoping that when I put the top up I'm gonna have access to everything but I don't know we'll see first of all I want to clean this mess get rid of what I don't need there's this panel that goes down there let me see I haven't actually tried it with the panel Ooh. look at that as if it has always been there huh? anyways let's see how hard the next task is gonna be yeah okay yeah so I have access to everything here I just need to remove the seat belts and we're gonna be fine looks like there's uh, three pieces all around at the top and three pieces at the bottom so I'm gonna take them out I'm gonna use them as a pattern and redo everything okay, but that's gonna happen in the next video because I already stole 20 minutes out of your time and I don't want to steal anymore so thanks for watching guys thanks for commenting and subscribing and uh, I'll see you in the next one bye